There's a lot of reasons why people go back out to drink. There really is. I know a lot of us try, and I know I tried at the beginning like crazy, and I always went out to drink again. I went back out. I went back out at nine months, and I went back out 14 months, believe it or not. You know, it took me a long time. It took me three years to get one year. I'm, I'm, I'm glad I stuck to it, but man, oh man, at the beginning, I was having a hard, hard time. These are some of the reasons I went back out. The first one, relationships. It's like the granddaddy of all of them, relationships. I had a heck of a time in my relationship. It was an existing relationship when I was drinking and I stayed in it in my recovery, but I had a heck of a time, you know, coping in that relationship. I was always angry. I had a stressful time in it. We had a small child. I was afraid I couldn't lift up my, live up to my responsibilities. There was a lot of problems. Intimacy, the intimacy part of it was all out of whack. It was a hell of a time staying sober in that relationship. I couldn't cope in it. I really couldn't. So what happened is I needed some emotional relief and mental relief. I went out to drink. So relationships is a real, real stressor or difficult thing for people in recovery to start doing or keep doing in early recovery. It really is, it really is. We get bored with the whole recovery life. Our lives get extremely slow. They're not exciting. They're not as full as chaos like they used to be. And we perceive that as being bored. Well, that's kind of like a normal life. My life is kind of like that right now. It's not boring, but there's not a lot of chaos into it. And that's one of the main reasons we don't fill the void of the drinking. Drinking took a lot of time up in our lives. It was a big activity. For me, it was everything. Everything I did had a drink involved with it. Everything I did was with the guys who were drinking. So there's always a lot of excitement. And myself, we were getting in fights when I drank, we were getting in trouble with the law. You know, there's so much BS going on when I drank. And the next morning, there was all that hype and all that, what happened last night? How was Joe doing? And all this kind of stuff. So there's a lot of chaos going on in my life. And when I sobered up, that left pretty quick. And I got really super bored. And life became empty. And I was wondering, what, what is this all about? I'm so bored. I need that excitement. So boredom is a huge one too. And people who are watching this video can probably really identify with that. I made another video about boredom because it really put it up here in the corner. It really affected me in early recovery. Man, I was so bored. And how I fixed that, I just went to meetings and started to fill my life with positive stuff, positive hobbies. Started filling my life up with things that I could do sober that didn't make me feel so damn bored. And let me tell you something, it was, it was a shocker how, how, how slow my life became once I stopped drinking. Another one is, is isolation. And I've, I've talked about isolation a lot in my videos because it's a big one. Isolation, staying by ourselves, even thinking that we can do recovery by ourselves is a form of isolation. We can't. We need to reach out and get support. Isolating is a huge, huge indicator that you're on the road to relapse. Are you gonna go back out and have another drink? Believe it or not, when I feel like I'm isolating, I reach out, the phone, the cell phone feels like it's 100 pounds and it's difficult or I get to a meeting and start to break that habit because isolation is a big, big deal when it comes to going back out having to drink. It really, really is. So if you're not feeling good about yourself, you're feeling down about yourself and isolation is the way you cope with it, stop doing that because it's going to make you go out and drink because we get inside ourselves, we get inside our heads and we get emotionally tight sort of thing, or we, you know, we get emotionally down and our brain just runs rampant. You know, we start thinking about all the olden days or whatever it may be, but it's not, uh, it doesn't work out good, believe it, me. So if you're isolating, try and break that habit. It was a bad one for me. I'd isolate in my room. I'd isolate in those relationships I told you about, that relationship. I'd go up to my room and stay there for hours and it never solved anything. The only thing, time it, that I got better in recovery is when I stopped isolation, isolating because isolating was huge for me. It was gigantic for me. It really, really was. I escape from everything and try to escape from everything and not own up to anything. Another one is really common, right? This is a common one. It's hanging around with your old buddies, hanging around with your old drinking buddies. Well, that's not going to work either. 
I did that. You know, I used to sit around, drink Coca-Cola and watch everybody do Coke, drink, smoke marijuana, all that kind of stuff. And I hung around them for a matter of months. And what did I do? Well, I quit just for a little bit and I went back out again and I drank and I started the cocaine again. I really did. So hanging around with your old buddies, I suggest not. Even if you have to be alone, I would suggest you get out there and try and find some new friends who are like-minded for what you're trying to achieve in your life. Another one is, is that hanging around in old places, like, I know we get lonely, right? That loneliness. And we want to go to the old bars where we used to fulfill that loneliness. But hanging around with, in the old places, the old bars, your old drinking haunts is definitely a no-no. You might think you'd be able to do it. You might be able to think that you'd be able to handle that. And you might, you might be able to handle it for three or four times or six times or 12 times or whatever. But that one time you go in there and you'll say, you know, life is not so bad. Maybe I'll just have a drink and away you go. That's how I, that's how I went back out drinking after 14 months. I was lonely, I went back out there, I went to the bar trying to look for some companionship or whatever, and it ended up having a drink and I was well on my way back to the roads of active alcoholism. And let me tell you, it wasn't that good. What a letdown, what a letdown. I really wanted to get sober because my life, I knew I was in trouble. I knew I was in trouble emotionally, mentally, financially, in all areas of my life, I knew. But at the beginning, it was very, very difficult. And I'll finish with the last one. The last one is, I just mentioned in the video, was loneliness, dealing with loneliness, finding some people I could hang around with to avoid that loneliness. Male and female friends I started to have, and eventually it did go away, but it took a while, it really did. I always think it was part of my emotional health that really helped me get over my loneliness, because that emotional health really separated me from my other people. Like I said, I could go in a room of a thousand people and still feel, still feel very lonely, very, very lonely. Okay. And I think I said that was the last one. I'm going to, I'm going to throw in one more. Okay. I'm just going to throw in one more. And that is my emotions, my emotions. I was always an emotional guy. I'm telling you from a small child, I had huge emotional problems. And one of the things that drove me out back to drink was my, my emotions, the way they controlled me. Oh my God. It was horrible the way they controlled me. My emotions had power over me that I never thought. I was up and down like a yo-yo. I was crying at one time, laughing at one time, you know, angry at another time. It's just all over the map. So my emotions at the early recovery had a real grip on me and they were controlling the hell out of me. And I, and, I, and I needed some relief. I couldn't get that relief from it. So I would go out and drink again. That emotional upset, that anger, that sadness, that feeling like a victim, all those things would trigger my drinking because I couldn't handle it. I need to get relief. I felt like my head was gonna pop off. And once I had a drink, it all settled down. It all went back to normal. But I knew deep down that this was not the way I was supposed to cope with my life one day at a time. It wasn't the way I was supposed to do things. So those are things in this video, and I always try to put things in the video that refer to me, not refer to anybody else, but I am really not that unique. Most alcoholics suffer from the things that I describe in this video, and a lot of times those things that I've described in this video can draw, draw us back out to the booze again to draw can take us back to our old life getting sober sober <laughs> i always say silver people always comment on it so i'm trying to not to do it getting sober is really difficult for people it really is alcoholism for myself has, has separated me from myself like i always say it separated me from 180 like it took away myself i didn't know who i was i couldn't accept my life on life terms i had difficulties huge because before i started drinking i was all messed up so when i started drinking it kind of fixed the messed up from the past but really what i was doing was the same thing not dealing with anything and 
just prolonging the misery. So when I sobered up, I didn't know myself. I didn't know what I wanted. I had tons of unresolved issues. Everything was going on. I had huge, huge problems. My friends in Alcoholics Anonymous now tell me that they said that we thought you'd never get sober, Terry, because I was always crying. I was always angry. You know, I ended up in jail in recovery, believe it or not. <laughs> Nine months of recovery and I ended up in jail. Like that's how it was going for me. It was going terribly, it really was. So sobering up and trying to get our lives back in order can be really hard and can be really slow. But all these things I mentioned in this video are truths and they're, they're watch signs for people in recovery. But the best thing I ever did in recovery was join a support network, went to therapy, got a little job with no stress, and just took my life one day at a time and kept things very, very simple in my life. Not adding any more stress. Life in itself can be stressful. Life in itself can be difficult. But when we start adding more negativity or start adding other stuff in our lives that stress us out or cause problems, it can really have a negative effect on our recovery. It really, really can, okay? So thank you very much for, for passing by and uh, watching my video, I really appreciate it. And um, I'm at the resort of, uh, I'm in a resort today actually. I'm in Cuba, my second vacation in about two months, three months. I went on my honeymoon, now I'm at another place in Cuba. I went to Punta Cana before and I'm in Cuba. I tell you, this resort is beautiful, it really is. I know you can see a little bit of it, I'm just gonna show you a little bit. But it's beautiful and you know, that's one thing about sobriety. We can become the people we never thought we could become and we can do the things that we never thought we could we could do in recovery okay so like i say this i'm terry g this is an alcohol free life channel where we learn to live sober one day at a time if you like this video please subscribe to my channel i'd really appreciate it if you didn't like it leave a comment below and tell me why because i'm always looking for self-improvement i'm always looking to improve the way i say things the way i express things and people have topics that they want to talk about i'm always really keen on on doing new stuff because sobering up getting recovery can change your life because it changed mine dramatically it changed mine a thousand percent i am not the person i used to be when i came into recovery i'm not that person anymore there is no way it works recovery works but we have to work it okay like i said i'm terry g this is an alcohol free life channel where we learn to live sober one day at a time if you like my video subscribe if you don't like my video don't subscribe <laughs> but can you all do me a favor can you please leave a comment and hit that like button i'd really appreciate it just remember stay safe stay sober and together we're in this together together we are strong together we can make sobriety easier on you and on me okay try it take it one day at a time and you'll be surprised what happens in your life okay god bless ciao from now from cuba and it's a beautiful day i think it's going to be over 30 here today it's going to be gorgeous and i'm looking forward to the day okay i'm going to sit on the beach and get more tan that's what i'm going to do okay and believe me they have great cappuccino here too great cappuccino okay over and out god bless i'll see you later ciao for now